Sometimes it's moments of brokenness which create the greatest transformations. Times where fear gives birth to faith, pain leads to healing, and chaos dissolves into peace. It's in these times we often see God more clearly. For in our deepest turmoil, He remains faithful. When our spirit is crushed, He remains strong. When our moment is too heavy, He carries the burden. As gold is refined by fire, we too are often refined by struggle. It's part of growing, changing, becoming. Lately, the journey has been difficult. Our breath has been labored. Our steps uneasy. But we stand in faith knowing who is leading us through this desert. The God of peace, the God of hope, the God of restoration. Thank you for, so much for joining us at Hope Lutheran Church for Worship Online. No matter when you're watching, where you're watching, how you're watching, we are glad that you are here. And if you could do us a favor and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, helps us reach more people with the good news of Jesus Christ. Pastor Carl, how are you? I'm good. I'm in Florida today. <laughs> you look like it. I like your shirt. Last, last week I said I was going to Florida, but I was off a week. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going on Tuesday. Excellent. That's going to be a fun time away. It will be. No doubt about it. Yep. And I've had a great week as well. Yes. Uh, my son, he plays uh, soccer on this club team that does really good and they're really competitive. And the team is now going to split up into two teams, an A team and a B team. And I was talking to the coach and the coach said, well, Hunter is right on the bubble. We don't know which team we're going to put him on. He could be on the A team or the B team. And you know what Hunter said to me? What? He said, Dad, tell Coach Jay to put me on the B team. I said, what? Why do you want to be on the B team? He said, well, because I'll be one of the better players on the B team and get more playing time. He's pretty smart. He gets it from his mom, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I was agree, amazed. I'll agree with that. <laughs> That's right. Well, I think we should worship together. Let's worship. All right. We open our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us together sing our opening hymn.
The good news for today comes from the book of John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The good news of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you this day, O Lord. Amen. Well, I want to ask you what may seem like a funny question. From time to time, does life ever feel difficult? <laughs> of course it does. With all that we go through in life, it can often feel really tough, right? Which is part of the reason I love history. Whenever I read about people who have had to endure far more than I can even imagine, I get inspired. For example, I was recently read about this one man named Henry Johnson. He was an African-American hero who single-handedly beat back a German assault during World War I, despite being stabbed, shot, and hit with a grenade, totaling 21 severe injuries, he managed to fight back 24 German soldiers and rescued a member of his own unit. He was the first American soldier to receive France's highest award for bravery, the Croix de Guerre, and in 2015, the White House also awarded him the Medal of Honor. I think part of my interest in history especially military history, is how often it mimics life. We train, develop strategy, and end up going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, exchanging blows with what happens, sometimes accomplishing incredible feats like Henry Johnson, and other times getting knocked to the floor. And that, my friends, is life. Don't get me wrong. I lead a blessed life with a wonderful family and job and friends, for all of which I am profoundly grateful. And yet, and yet we are still reminded that across the globe, there is still a pandemic going on, that people are still struggling to find out how to make ends meet. And my father, father-in-law, and my brother's father-in-law are still battling illness. And I have several friends dealing with pretty difficult things at work or home. And that's the thing. At any given moment, even when things are going relatively well, there are still so many difficult things to deal with in this life that it often feels like a battle. Or maybe a better, better metaphor, as given in our good news lesson today, it feels like being pruned. Life often feels like being cut, cut down by tragedies big and small, cut down by disappointments or despair, cut down by illness or job loss or other circumstances beyond our control and left to wither and die. And nobody knows this better than Jesus. So in our good news lesson today, he gives to us a promise. But first, a little bit of context of what's happening here. Jesus is offering these words to his disciples on the night before his crucifixion. He knows what is going to happen, both to himself and to his flock, and they do not. They are about to be cut down by his crucifixion and death, and he is assuring them that it will not be little, senseless cutting, but an all-out loss. But even so, that they will not only survive, but flourish. 
The second context is that of the community for which John is writing his biography of Jesus. Because by the time they hear these words, they've already been scattered, likely thrown out of their synagogue, and have had plenty of reasons to feel like they've been abandoned. But John writes to assure them that even though they have been cut, it is the pruning for more abundant fruit and life. No doubt that was hard to believe, as there was very little evidence available to the disciples or the first Christians that they had not been abandoned. And no doubt it's still hard to believe, on our end as well, as so much of life simply tears at us with no evidence that it is toward some more fruitful future. But even in the midst of this uncertainty and distress, Jesus still invites us, actually not just invites, but promises us that he will not abandon us, but rather will cling to us like a vine clings to a tree, so that we endure, persevere, and even flourish among these present difficulties. Here's the thing. If Jesus had only said, abide in me or else, that would be a different story. But it's not. Abide in me, Jesus says, as I abide in you. This is more than good advice, more than an invitation. This is a promise that no matter what happens, Jesus will be with us. That no matter what happens, Jesus will hold on to us. And that no matter what happens, God in Jesus will guide us and lead us into a better future. By the way, is, this is no way saying that everything happens for a reason. Rather, it's to say that no matter what happens, we have God's promise in Jesus to work for our good. Remember that after all, that these words are said just before Jesus goes to the cross. And I would argue that the cross was not just a part of a larger plan, but also the chief example of God's commitment to wrestle life and hope from the very place that seems most empty of life and hope. That there is nothing, nothing that God wouldn't do to show us God's commitment to us. A significant part of what the cross means is that God chose not to sit back in heaven, removed from the pain and the hardships of our mortal, free, and difficult life in this world, but rather came in Christ to be joined to it. The ups and the downs, the hopes and the disappointments, the frailties and faults of our life in this world, so that we would know of God's unending commitment to us. The cross was not only the instrument that made this evidence and testimony possible, but it's evidence and testimony to just how much God loves us and God promises to be with us through all things. And in the resurrection, we find the promise that no matter how much tragedy we endure, these hardships will not have the last word. Let's be honest, this can be a hard life to live and so we need reminding to hear once again that the suffering we go through is not wasteful cutting, but pruning for a more abundant future. And that no matter what happens, Jesus will not abandon us. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what you've been through. And I don't know what you will go through in the future. But what I do know is that no matter what you have faced, are facing, or will face, God will be with you, that God will guide you, lead you, and love you no matter what may come. And for that, we give our thanks and praise. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for the reminder that no matter what we face in life, you are with us, loving us, guiding us, and leading us, that you are pruning us for a more abundant future. Help us remember that promise this day and always. All this we pray in your holy and precious name. Amen. Well, thank you to those of you who've been contributing financially to Hope uh, during these months. You are making a huge difference, not only in the life of this community, but all around the world. Believe it or not, all around the world. 
So if you'd like to partner with us and support our ministry, there are three ways you can do so. One, you can mail in an offering to Hope Lutheran Church at 45900 Portola Avenue in Palm Desert, California, 92260. You can text to give. If you have a smartphone, just text 84321 and look for Hope in Palm Desert. And finally, you can go to hopepd.org. There you'll find not only ways to give, but all of the different ministry opportunities that are happening. So I hope that you'll go to hopepd.org right now and just see what's happening here at Hope Lutheran Church. Now let us sing together. Let us confess our holy Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Alive in Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Let us pray. 
God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy is great. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depend on the earth for life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they lead not by fear, but with love, for those they are called to serve. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You gather us with all the saints by the power of your spirit, especially with Ananias, the Bishop of Alexandria, and those we name before you. Be with Jim Haas family in the death of their granddaughter, and be with Sharon McDonald in the death of her son, Greg. With them, may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Let us prepare our hearts to receive the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In a like manner, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most holy and precious blood given and shed for you. May God guide and bless your every footstep until life's everlasting. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant to you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.